I got into sustainable agriculture from being a chef and searching out the highest quality ingredients I could get. I wanted, you know, the best pork I could get my hands on. The only way to get that was to buy a local pig and cut it up. We opened Local Pig in 2012, um, in February, which is just the best time to open a <laughs> butcher shop focused on grilling. I wanted something that was focused on food, but was a different avenue than a restaurant. It was really small at first, and we kind of just grew as, as people came. So we picked the name Local Pig pretty quickly, but didn't settle on it for a while. It's one of those names that was kind of funny and is literally descriptive. We use local pigs in everything we do. I didn't want to pigeonhole the place into being a butcher shop. You know, a meat market also didn't seem to be the right area. Um, we landed on charcuterie, which is a little fancy way of saying meat market in French. And, you know, local pig just kind of fit the bill. Pig Witch came in and Pig Witch is now a big part of our life. Pig Witch came a year after local pig. The idea of Pig Witch pretty much came to the first day of Local Pig. The first customer walked in and said, hey, I work down the street, can I get a sandwich? And I said, ah, we actually only have meats, but we don't have bread and sandwiches. And he's like, man, I really need a sandwich. I was like, all right, fine. Maybe we can figure out a way to do sandwiches. So when we moved to City Market, we were able to get a spot that has a shared basement with two adjoining storefronts, which is just perfect for our two concepts that also share basically everything. We bring in whole animals in the basement, we cut them up, and they come out as steaks, chops, and sausages for the meat market, local pig, and they come out as uh, fixings for sandwiches out of pigwich. You know, sustainable agriculture is the backbone of what we do. We source 100% of our proteins from small family farms right around here. After doing that, meeting farmers, developing those relationships, paying more money, being a long-term customer, I liked the product and then decided that I really enjoyed what was also the, the, the raising part of it. You know, if we're gonna eat meat, maybe we should respect it, um, and maybe that's the thing I can figure out, how to make that a, a, a full-time thing for at least a few farmers. It's never been something we are, you know, blasting out everywhere, and that's been intentional. We don't wanna come off proselytizing. We wanna be a solution if you want it, two days a week, one day a week, or once a month. Um, you know, if your goal is sustainable agriculture at a reasonable price point, in a place you can come and grab it, then we're here for you. You know, if you just want the best bacon you've ever had, just come and grab it and you don't need to ask a ton more questions. But you're only gonna get really good pork belly and really good bacon from sustainably raised animals. Walking in, Cheddar Burger! I'm very proud of our burger, which has now evolved into the third pound cheddar burger because it was so popular we made more burgers. The original burger is really simple, but just uses a couple of different really good toppings. The burger at Pigwitch starts with an onion bun from farm to market. We like an egg bun, not a brioche bun. It's a little bit rich, but it's not over the top. Toasted on both sides. The meat itself is a blend of plate, which is analogous to pork belly, but off the cow, um, very fatty and uh, chuck grind and a little bit of salt. So the key is to grind it twice and put a little bit of salt in it, but not too much. Press it thin enough that you can actually cook it well done so you don't have to deal with any mid-rare people. Um, simultaneously making it juicy so you don't have to deal with people thinking it's dry. And that's a flat top only burger, really important. It's not the burger we sell at Local Pig is not the same burger we sell at Pig Witch. It's the same blend, it's a different press. And the diameter and the thinness is the important part. The three condiments, I think, just really set everything else off. Um, the onion pickles are rich without being excessively acidic. Uh, the tomato jam is sweet without being excessively cloying. And the porcini aioli is a fat that you don't totally notice because the porcini flavor mimics the beef flavor and kind of just spreads everything out and gives you a ton of umami. And then you got cheese. You guys love cheese. Delty cheese. That's it. That's the burger at Pigwich. I love the River Market. It was the first pod we moved to 15 years ago when my wife and I moved to town. So when it came time to find a new home, City Market was at the top of the list. It, we did look at other spots, but it was too good to say no to, to have a, a giant farmer's market literally on our patio. 
it's a great vibe all six days of the week, and then Saturday comes and it's a different vibe. There are a ton of people. The road is closed, the farmers are in the middle, there are 10, 15,000 people walking around. It's got a great big city feel, which I really like, but also, it's really low key. It's not crazy, it's, it's just people out to have a good time. It's really, you get people from everywhere, from every corner of town, suburban, urban, all the way out to the country, everybody comes to the market. It's just a great spot to hang out for a couple hours. We're already using the built-in vendors. It's kind of great, you know, guys are like, hey, I need something, and we just literally walk five steps up to the produce market and get what we want and make it special. There's a central philosophy of ice cream, and it's just that, you know, it, it's everything perfect for a minute. Everybody had their first ice cream cone and they are too young to remember it almost, but it's still in their brain somewhere. We wanted the place to just be that for people. So that was the central tenet of it, was just to make a place where people could come get away from the world. We try to keep out a lot of extraneous stuff and uh, just let people have their own experience in the space and really enjoy it. Me and my wife, we opened the Waldo shop in 2016, and then in August of 2018, we opened up a shop in the River Market area of Kansas City. Every time me and my wife would go to a city or visit somewhere new, you know, I mean, you always go to the ice cream place. You want to find the neat, interesting, fun place with unique flavors or good classics that you really want to, you know, just get a cone and walk around and catch the area, you know? And uh, when we would come back to Kansas City, there wasn't anybody that really just hit that bullseye. So uh, we thought, you know, the lane was wide open and people would really like to have something like that. Betty Ray was my grandmother. She just loved making food. She was never happier than when she was doing that and making other people happy. My parents made sure we ate really well growing up. That obviously meant none of the fun cereals. And uh, we'd go to grandma's house and, you know, just have a, all kinds of amazing treats and all the great stuff we couldn't get at home. Ice cream can kind of like do a lightning bolt right into your brain to that to that memory spot, you know? So I just wanted that spirit to kind of continue. When people walk right through the door, the first thing they smell is our fresh waffle cones being baked. In that sense, we've actually been able to create a food memory for people. You know, we have little kids that have been coming in here every week for a few years now. And when they think of ice cream 20 years from now, they might think of that waffle cone smell. So I created the recipe for our waffle cone batter. We cream the butter and sugar. We, you know, just introduce eggs and milk and your kind of typical stuff. And then we make them on these little irons, scoop at a time. And they end up being kind of like a flat pancake. They set really nicely, but when you eat them, you get everything that went into it at a perfect balance. And it just sets the ice cream off really nicely. I really wanted, you know, anybody at all to come in here and have possibly a range of things for them so that they could make that choice. You can't ignore the classics. We wanted to have a, a stable kind of um, group of flavors around for people who would be coming back a lot or just like the very standard stuff. We also wanted to have, you know, the fun experimental stuff that we could do that just allows us to do anything we can think of. We were kind of working on a cereal idea as kind of an homage to Christine Tazi and Milk Bar. We just did a kind of cereal milk base, and then I made a honey malt syrup that we tossed a bunch of bad cereals in. We got cereal marshmallows by the bag, just the marshmallows. Just mixed it all together, made the ice cream. It tastes like a memory of a sweet bowl of cereal. We have mint and chocolate cookies. We use fresh mint, we steep it overnight, uh, so rather than an extract, you get that nice herbaceous kind of full body flavor to it. For s'mores, we actually make the marshmallow fluff from scratch uh, in huge batches, torch it with a giant blowtorch so that you actually do taste that burnt marshmallow flavor in the ice cream. 
you know, you have your whole range of people out there. Some don't like sweet, some don't like, you know, the savory sweet combo. You, we have your vegans, we've got a lot of celiacs coming, we've got people with allergies. And so the whole display case and really the whole menu is set up so that anybody that walks through the door of any age can have, you know, just a great experience on something. I always like older parts of town, and I was drawn to the River Market just because it's such a cool old part of the city. It's clearly got so much history to it, and different eras, you know, I mean, the River era and then the Mob era, there's like so much neat stuff about it, and it's vibrant. The streetcar's running through, a lot of people living down here, a lot of people working down here. It's almost like a hub for people from up north to come down and for people from down south to come up and just, you know, enjoy a part of the city for a while. And those parts of any city are, you know, like, so important. To be in them is, you know, it's, it's kind of an honor and it's uh, something that we take really seriously. We want to live up to the neighborhood that we're in. It's so cool seeing people respond to what we're doing. When you see it firsthand over and over and over again, you realize they're connecting to something in their mind, in their self, and we're a part of that. It's just a wonderful thing. I always wanted a sandwich shop. I love sandwiches. That's like one of my favorite things to eat. Uh, I feel like you can introduce new flavors to people through a sandwich. I was working as a chef, and I partnered up with the owner of this restaurant that was working there, and he's like, hey, we got a spot in the city market. Come up with a concept. And this is kind of like, just kind of snowballed. From nothing, we just started the bite. This is what it came out, this crazy <laughs> restaurant that we have now, so. One of our, my biggest struggles is like, what type of restaurant you are. I didn't know what flavors I wanted to do, so I didn't want to do a cold cut sandwiches. I wanted to bring something different. So I thought about Mexican flavors. During that time, it, the, the fusion was big in the coast and it was slowly coming the way it was. And I always loved Korean food and I think Korean food and, and Mexican food go really good together. There's slow stews and the spice levels are kind of the same. I'm slowly adding all the different ingredients or flavors. Nobody's doing it in Kansas City. Let's see what will happen. People were expecting a taqueria or some Mexican restaurant for me, but we're a sandwich shop. We sell Mexican sandwiches with Korean influences. The anatomy of a sandwich will be bread, meats, sauces, vegetable. I try to have the acidity, sweetness, spicy, and savoriness on it. You got a winner. Like, I think that's a sandwich should work. Senor Chang was like the first sandwich that started the whole menu. That was the first sandwich that I came with. That had some leftover Korean food one day, and I had some bread, I put it, made a sandwich out of it. I was like, man, this will be great. And I slowly started adding stuff to it. For the Senor Chang, we toast the bread. It gets a nice, it's a soft in the middle, but it's gonna be crunchy. The next layer, you have the Korean short ribs in there that we, it's a barbacoa style, slow cooked. And then we add some queso fresco, some crema with sriracha sauce in it, pickled onion, cilantro, pickle jalapenos and radishes. You have the acidity from the pickled onions, you got the crunch from those radishes, the freshness from the cilantro, and then a little heat with the jalapenos, then you're kinda just calm it down with the queso fresco and the crema. It's a sandwich that I always recommend. This is my favorite sandwich. I still eat it. It's been five years and I still eat that sandwich at least once a week now. And yeah, it's, it's just good. Pozole is one of my favorite soups. If you're not drinking, a bowl of pozole in the morning cures everything. If you're sick from the flu, a bowl of pozole, it just cures it. I think it's the spiciness from it, or, or just the broth, or you know, the love that people put in it. <laughs> so the first bite of the pozole, you're gonna have, have all that taste of that lime, but then it's slowly gonna build the flavors from all the chilies in there, and it's not gonna be spicy. 
because a lot of these chilies are roasted and they're kind of mild, but just to add a little bit of our touch, uh, we use different chilies. Usually Pozole, they only use Guajillo and some New Mexico. Uh, we like to use uh, pasillas, anchos, and just give it a little more bold, deeper flavors to it. You're gonna feel some smokiness, uh, some sweetness from the pasilla in there, and then you got the hominy that is just as this creaminess to your bite. That first bite is always the best bite, I feel like, from the pozole, and it just starts building up. You'll find different flavors as you continue. Everyone will be different, depends what you put on that spoon. You, you wanna get to the bottom of that bowl. It's a good, good dish, like I just, I love pozole. I love the rumor market. It's a different feel than other parts of the city. You know, like in Mexico, you have those big markets, and every day there's people selling vegetables and food and all of that. All the owners, all the farmers, we all work together and try to help each other out. Uh, and it's, it's a good vibe to be here. Uh, why not? You know, you got fresh produce outside. If I run out of something, I just go talk to the farmers. You know, it's, everything is here. I wanted to be me, like in this restaurant. I love art, you know, art is a big part of me. Music is a big part of like my daily lifestyle. And I have a lot of friends that are artists. A lot of the artists that we have here are female artists, they're minority artists. Like they don't get the same like, exposure as anybody. So, and I just wanted to showcase, I feel like, you know, food, art, music, all that kind of comes together. You know, we have a little community of that. And, you know, try to express ourselves. I love what I do. Uh, you know, I love seeing the faces of people when they take a bite of the sandwich. And they're like, this is like the best sandwich I had because I never had anything like this. I feel like being a restaurant owner, being a chef, is like you're putting you on that plate. Getting into the kitchen, for me, my mom always tells me it was about seven years old that I started cooking, and I just never really stopped. Growing up, I learned a lot of cooking from my mom, my grandpa. It's always about paying homage for me. They gave me my start, they got me interested in it. For some reason, I was just naturally drawn to it. It paid a lot of attention to it. Anything I could pick up, I would. At seven years old, I had to push a chair up to the counter. So I got to see more, I got to help out. Don't burn yourself, stay away, this is hot, this is what this means. The communication even back then in the kitchen between my mom and I uh, and my grandfather was, was big, just like it is now in, in the kitchen doing it professionally. You have to talk, you have to communicate, there's a lot to learn. As long as I could read, I could follow a recipe, and if I followed it, then it should be flawless and everything should come out right. First try, um, I made this Mississippi mud brownie that my mom had in one of her recipes. I didn't tell her that I was doing it at the time because I messed up, I didn't want her to know I messed up. Everything came out perfect, and when it comes out better than the way you expect it, you just chase that feeling. I don't have to ever worry about whether or not my mom is impressed with what I'm doing with my career, with my life, the decisions I've made, because she tells me all the time. <laughs> she's, she's a great person, and she's always been there for me. I have favorite dishes that my mom's made, and I just can't replicate them. I can't make food like she makes it. I chase that, I can tell you that much. I try. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> Farmhouse opened in 2009, uh, July 4th. So we just passed our, our 10 year mark. Coming to the farmhouse, we wanted to work with local companies. We wanted more of that. You know, the one thing that we stay true to is that we are farm to table. 
We're working with our farmers, we're working with the community, and that's what we stand behind because they stand behind us. There's an art behind it, uh, there's a love behind it, there's the respect of not only the farmer, the product that they raised or grew. We get to show the community what our farmers are growing, what we can do with it. It doesn't get much more fun than that, really. We change our menu four times a year. Um, we basically know the basics of everything that's going to be coming in uh, in those three seasons. Um, so we'll base our menu around that, but we do specials every day. And that's just basically for us to use the local products in ways that we couldn't just keep doing on the menu. For us, it's getting something that was just picked yesterday or picking something out of our own garden and cooking with it and seeing it from start to finish. Doing this in a professional kitchen, um, doing this with professionals, it's, it's great. We bump elbows with each other all the time. If somebody's coming around on your left side, they say, on your left, on your left hot, on your left sharp. Just that way it's real quick, it's, it's precise, quick communication. That way you don't need to have a story about it. That's basically just the motto we have. There's things that you do, there's rules in the kitchen that you don't cross, and there's rules that you follow and everything's in perfect harmony. Trends come, they go. We have our styles, we mix them in with, uh, with just local cuisine and what other people might be doing, but really we like, to, we like to do our own thing and we like to be the farmhouse. On our menu we'll have the hanger steak, it's 36 days aged. With a really good piece of beef, you only need salt and pepper, a little bit of oil, and then the rest is just uh, whatever you want to accent your steak with. We make a blue cheese butter. We whip some air into the butter, get it nice and light. Um, we go in with some blue cheese, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and garlic. We keep it pretty simple. It just melts in your mouth. It's what a steak should taste like. We like to hand cut our fries because once again, it just it takes it back to the love that we put behind every step of our food. We control it from A to B and then get them ready for service and they just have the perfect crispy fries. Here in the River Market, it's, it's just coming to life. The River Market has it all. It's very diverse in that sense. Brian and I, we were looking for spots. We were in love with the River Market. We wanted, to, we wanted to have a restaurant here. And seeing the evolution of people coming in and out of the doors is just is, is crazy. There's so many more people now. The streetcar helped out a lot. The tourists now have a nice social media following. They can take the streetcar down. It drops them off a half a block from our door, and there's new faces. They might be gone tomorrow, but you know we got them today. Here at the farmhouse, you, you could be sitting next to somebody that has a sleeveless shirt, tattoos, and there's a business meeting going on right next to them, and that's what we love about it. You know, come as you are, enjoy the food, trust us. You know, we love to do what we're doing, we love to cook. <laughs>